Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Mike Walker and today we're talking about my various mics, how they sound, plus when and why I'd use this over this. I've been recording audio since my first uh, studio back in 1987 and uh, I used to make backing tracks for uh, for, for artists and musicians and I also used to record vocals and albums and instrumental uh, compilations and all type of things like that uh, and I did it for about 10 years and it was quite a nice little business until karaoke came along and then I had to take a bit of a back seat and concentrate more on the film side of the business um, so that really killed off the uh, albums and things or certainly the backing tracks but during that time I had this uh, Audio Technica 4033 which is a, a great mic you know it's a gold plated large diaphragm condenser phantom powered it's got a cardioid pickup pattern uh, absolutely superb for, for vocals and it's certainly my go-to mic for, uh, for voiceovers. Paul Anderson's men continued their fantastic start by beating a spirited London Broncos outfit with relative comfort in round two. The game saw the Giants had a debut to overseas recruit Akuma Tai and after a tight first half, the Giants went into the break with a 12-6 lead thanks to two tries and goals from Danny Bruff. Right, the mic you're hearing now is the Sennheiser MKH416 shotgun mic. Um, let me just show you what it looks like. There it is on a boom stand in the interview situation. Um, it's quite surprising how close you can get the mic to the sound source um, if you angle the camera correctly. Um, that's only probably a few inches away. Seems to be the industry standard shotgun mic for, you know, used in broadcast and films. Uh, it is the, the microphone of choice for these people uh, because of its quality. Its build quality is superb. It's built like a tank. It can withstand all sorts of drops and kicks. I've had mine probably 15 years or so. Um, the sound is, is, is just amazing. Uh, it's, it's high sensitivity which means you're going to get a little bit more volume from it as well at the same level on your recorder um, the sound itself is very warm full and natural accurate sound and you don't really have to do much in post with it it sounds fantastic straight out of the camera um, and the sound rejection qualities of it so any if it's not if it's pointing towards a sound source that's what you're going to get certainly the voice it seems to home in on the voice and uh, everything else seems to be phasing in the background. It's, it's quite amazing how it rejects sound from behind and the side. They're not cheap. Um, it's probably about £800 to buy. Maybe a second hand one you can pick up for 600 650 I don't know. They hold the price very well. So it's a bit of an investment if you get one. The sort of competition would be half the price, I suppose. Uh, certainly second hand. Um, but if you want the best... Uh, get a Sennheiser 416 uh, there's many reviews on YouTube you'll see they all say the same thing uh, it's a question of do you want to pay that double the price for something that's is it double the to me it's justified but uh, because it's a lifetime investment you know so if you've got a bit of spare cash get an MKH 416 from Sennheiser yes and no we had a fantastic pre-season we um, but Again, we went there in, in pre-season and we got pumped. We got, I think we got beat about 20-0. And um, obviously, kick up our behinds, but we went to, and then we played Widnes here, we pumped them. And then we just built built on week in, week out from there. And we went there and we were, we were full of confidence. And, and against Stu, I can remember his first run, he just skittled a couple of them. And I just knew from then on, everyone was just buzzing and everyone was feeding off each other. And again, it was just a total different feeling from the year before. And everyone was working hard for each other, whereas last year it was all individuals. Well, this one is uh, a Shaw SM58. Uh, the reason I've got this in my bag is because it's really good in high sound pressure levels. Uh, these mics were developed in the 60s, originally as a studio mic, in fact, but then later developed as a live performance mic uh, designed for high gain before it feeds back. Um, but the thing about it is uh, if you want to record somebody, say, in a, a nightclub uh, or a disco, and there's a lot of sound there a lot of high pressure sound loud noise and you want to get an interview then you can get one with this mic it will actually work they've obviously got to keep it nice and close but uh, it will 
get over the sound of the uh, background music, no matter how loud it is. The sound pressure level on this mic is 150 dB, which is equivalent to something like a jet engine from 20 meters. So um, it's pretty good, and it's a it's a pretty good mic to have in your bag. It's not at the top of my bag; it's at the bottom of my bag. And I don't think I'll be getting up on the karaoke, uh, so it's pretty much in the bottom of my bag. Just have a look at this interview. It was taken with this mic in a nightclub quite recently, and you'll see how it performs. What's your best memories of the Acapulco? My best memory is the first time we went out in the Acapulco and Beth found her love of her life called Josh. They get to, they, they, to get married next year. Seriously. She met the love of her life here at the Acker. Getting married, that's really exciting stuff. I bet you can't wait. Okay, this mic is a Sennheiser G series. It's quite old now, actually. I've had these quite a while again. Um, this model is the EW100 G2 series. Um, there is, uh, there's been subsequent models since then, so they, you know, they're a little bit out of date, but the principle's the same. It's a wireless mic with a body pack, a Lavellia mic, which sounds really nice, and uh, that transmits that where the cables are lost are between here and here, and this can be a distance of, I don't know, maybe 40 metres, I would say, probably a bit more line of sight, um, but, but quite a distance. I've never really tried it, but... Um, quite a distance, I would say 40, 50 metres at least. Um, so that goes into the camera or your mixer if you're using two, I do have two, so if I've got an interview situation where I've got a presenter and an interviewee, I'll give these one each, put them on different frequencies, uh, put them into the um, H5 and straight into the GH5. If I'm using the other camera, then I've got XLR inputs on that and I'll just put one, one uh, in channel one, one in channel two. And it works great and it sounds well. And here's a, an example of the sound of this particular mic in the field. Right, right. that's fine Michael, yeah, vision's very good there. Um, I'd like to show you the results of the scan that we did just a few minutes ago in the, in the other room. We can come across and we can see, first of all I'd like to show you the signs of the, the, the optic nerve head, which is where the optic nerve goes into the back of the eye, and that looks all very healthy. Okay, um, I'm going to finish with the, um, the mic I started with right at the very beginning and I never said what it was um, but it was this Zoom F1 um, which I think for the money I think I paid 145 for this brand new um, I got a pretty good deal on it so you know there might be a bit more than that but uh, 145, 175 certainly no more than that and for the money this is absolutely amazing the sound quality of the mic the sound quality of the mic is probably I would say is good um, it certainly sounds to me exactly the same as the Sennheisers. Uh, the unit itself is a recorder and it's unbelievably small for a recorder. just works like the body pack on the uh, EW100. Um, but it records internally as well. So you plug the mic into here and then you've got an output if you like. You can just leave it and not have an output to the camera. You can sync it up later if you want. But I tend to, if I'm near or doing something like this, I will plug uh, the unit into the GH5 and then I've got I've got the audio on the camera and I've also got it on here as well as a backup and you've a choice of recording formats um, it does WAF format um, and MP3 so if you want a big recording I mean, you want a long recording um, but you've got like a week or something uh, of, of MP3 of WAF files I think it's probably 45 hours on a 16 gig card so I tend to record in WAF 16-bit 48K, uh, the same as uh, the default on on, the, on video recording. And it works fine um, if I need to use it. Um, but mainly, to be honest, I just use the sound that goes into the GH5. It sounds great. So this unit, um, I'm really happy with. Uh, and if I'm doing something like this, I will just use this. Uh, if I'm doing some vlogging or uh, giving some information uh, this is my go-to mic, you know, because it's so easy to set up. The batteries last for ages. Um, uh, two batteries in this will give you 10 hours, 12 hours, I don't know, a long time. You can also use it as a um, an audio interface and you can tell it to, it runs off the USB, the power as well, so it's powered by the USB. Um, it's got the signal going in through the USB and you program whether you want mono, stereo, whatever you want, and you can just plug it straight in there and, and you've got an audio interface. So it does so many things, it's so small, it's not expensive and the quality is good, what more can I say? It's light, 
uh, I think it's a fantastic mic. And if you listen to the sound quality of this compared to the uh, S, the uh, EW100, which was the one before this, uh, obviously it's not going to sound as good as a 416 and it's not going to sound as good as an AT4033, but it's good enough for, for vlogging and it's great in the field. So it's a great little recorder and I'd recommend it highly. To enable the GH5 to film at 60 frames per second in 4K, just follow these simple steps. Uh, this is the one that I normally film in, the 4K 50p um, 8 bit, 4 to 150 megabits is the one that I usually use. So, in conclusion, talking about the uh, various mics that I use and how I use them, um, we've talked about the AT4033, the studio mic. Um, that I would use for voiceovers in the studio, for high quality voiceovers, sounds tremendous. Uh, the MK416, the shotgun mic, I'd use for high quality interviews where they're sat there, a sport interview or a, a presenter, uh, that type of thing where they're not moving and you're in control of the situation. The 416 every time, outside broadcast 416 every time, um, put the Rycote on it and you've got uh, all the protection from the wind, that's usually enough. Um, if you want to sp splash out and get a basket and uh, an external windshield then that's quite expensive but if that's the way to go then that's good but this is pretty good for for most instances um, and then we've got the SM58 which I'd use for very high sound pressure levels in a nightclub that type of thing where you've got to get some sound and the conditions are not very good to get it that's that's the way I'd go for that one and then we've got the wireless G series the two uh, Lavellias that I've got for an interview situation when you want both the presenter and the interviewee to have the same sort of sound on the mic um, and that's where I go for that also for for lectures for lectern type uh, presentations you know corporate do's that type of thing um, and then uh, lastly the uh, Zoom F1 uh, this one which we're using now um, is great for vlogging for a one-man show on camera um, it's great, it backs up, um, that's my go-to mic for vlogging and uh, say filming one talking head, uh, you know, out and about and, and, and quick setup is absolutely brilliant. And then the other thing we haven't talked about so much is the, is the H5 which is a zoom again and to be fair to the tests on the mic I did use the H5 in channel 1 connected to the, to the GH5 so it was a fair test of the 4033, the 416 and, and the um, wireless G series. I plugged them all into here and all, all I did was adjust the channel level uh, on channel 1 to give it a fair test and a fair sound to put it on a level playing field. So, um, and this I use for that reason. It's got two XLRs. Um, my broadcast camera's got two XLRs on it but for GH5 I would have to couple it to this. So I've got the same input facility that I've got on, on, on my big broadcast camera. So um, that's it really. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something about the way I use the microphones that I've got. Um, and they're in my bag. I uh, don't take them all out at the same time. I'd find out what I'm doing first. Um, but those are the audio devices I use to record sound. So hope you've enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one.